Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. You guys know I'm jumping right into the video. As you guys can see, okay, listen, listen, okay, some things we got to talk about. But I'm starting off with, I guess, kind of clean hair. Uh, this is coming from a fro, y'all. So <laughs> I actually just put some little scrunchies in my hair to go to sleep and a scarf. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of refresh my hair. So I'm taking some of the Mazzani uh, leave-in conditioner just to kind of rehydrate, moisturize, all that good stuff before I detangle because obviously I do not want to snatch out my hair. So I did go ahead and actually uh, apply a little bit of hair oil. I think it was like an almond oil and a coconut oil mixture. Um, and I'm just applying that to my hair just to kind of hydrate all that good stuff. Y'all, first of all, look at how much my hair has grown. So if you are new here, welcome. <laughs> About a year and a half ago, we were literally in the same mirror chopping off a lot more hair. So um, yeah, I'm starting off with the middle part. Y'all know I'm the queen of like off center middle part. So I actually did really, really good <laughs> at making sure that my hair was even on both sides so i'm going to be showing you how to pretty much prep and prime your hair for protective stylings whether you're going to be doing crochet braids you're going to be wearing wigs like whatever it is that you need a solid like flat um i guess like braid pattern for that's exactly what i'm showing you today so to make it a little bit easier i always start off by parting my hair down the center and then i start on the left side or the right side whichever you prefer and i split that side into two and then i kind of focus on the ear area right so this is where i noticed that of course the nape of my neck is not the the same width or length <laughs> as um, the front of my hairline, right? So this is where I kind of determine how much hair I want to leave out. I know that for the nape area, I definitely want to protect it as much as possible. So I typically like to braid it straight across. Um, but this is kind of where I'm going to go ahead and just section this out because I know that my cornrows is just not going to be enough space for me to be able to uh, create braids going straight to the back and have them all even and kind of laying the way I want them to. So what I'm going to do is connect these two braids you guys can see voila section one is gonna kind of be missing until we connect it to two and then two will connect to three so starting off by just kind of using a wide tooth comb just to detangle and then i'm actually taking a um, little bit of edge control i think this was the is it cream of nature i think so whatever you want to use you absolutely can and i'm just going to go ahead and pretty much smooth that to the front of my hair just to help lay everything down and kind of get rid of flyaways so i am not that great at explaining how to braid i say this over and over and over again if you are a visual learner now's the time to really start watching okay put this on the big big screen and literally watch this as many times as you have to <laughs> because i'm not gonna talk the entire video i really want you guys to be able to focus in on what it is that i'm doing so in order to perfect the part you guys can already see you are gonna need a metal rat tail comb i think it's rat tail <laughs> anywho you guys can find these amazon beauty supply store target anywhere you need to you can find one and i always make sure to take my time at the start of the braid so this is where you really want to concentrate split everything into three move slow don't stretch the hair back too fast because you don't want it to just look like one long lazy braid like it's not gonna stay tight you want it to be firm now i'm light bright so you guys know my scalp gets really red really easy i do braid fairly tight though i'm not gonna lie because by the end of this i'm like oh i got a little facelift going on okay so yeah just know that this is you braiding your own hair so do as you feel i prefer for my braids to be a little tighter and you guys can see this is where i'm kind of just connecting the first braid to the second and we're going to continue this down and go across the nape of the neck and pretty much have that as tight as possible because you really want to make sure that it's out of the way now this is kind of an area where we all have this issue right especially you're braiding your own hair sometimes you might pull a little bit of extra hair from the other side so having you a mirror in front of you i guess once you're able to you know get the hang of braiding right <laughs> it's really going to help you out because you can always just go back and clean it up check your work make sure that it's straight to be honest it won't really matter if it's straight or not i'm only really trying my best to perfect this for you guys because it's a tutorial but if not like y'all i would throw these braids in and call it a day right so if you want to do that get the pattern down pack and then just kind of go from there if you're not you know super great at parting don't obsess over it you'll get better at time the more and more you practice so 
you guys can see I'm just pretty much connecting everything going straight across the nape area and then what I'm gonna do is actually create this same pattern on the other side so I'm gonna end up doing a cornrow straight to the back I'll end up connecting it with this braid and then of course it's pretty much just gonna be finishing out the cornrows and connecting them as we go from here so this is pretty much time for you to watch now make sure you got your pen and paper down run it back if you need to leave any comments or questions um, so that I can help you out along the way and enjoy this nice and lovely tutorial I will be back Back at the end for you guys.
all right so it's giving arm workout all right we're done for the week <laughs> so as you guys can see i'm on that final braid and i wanted to show you how to pretty much finish this off so i'm literally just pulling the braid up into the cornrow i'm working on and i do that on either side i don't try to do it all at once but the goal is to have the flattest install if your hair is bulky in this area and you realize like eh, i actually don't need to flip it up then don't do not force the flip ups because we will know okay your hair will be super lumpy so you definitely don't want that to happen and if you discover that you need to do even smaller braids than what I'm doing you can still use this exact pattern I promise you it works like a dream and from here you guys know what's coming okay we are going to oil the scalp <laughs> so this is the miel this is like their um I can't think of all the ingredients that are there, but I'll leave the details down in my description box for you in case you need it. And I like to just apply that in certain areas of my braids and then on the tip or the, just the end to kind of finish it off, of course, just to keep everything nice and hydrated, protected, all that good stuff. And I'll kind of do this periodically. I'll even wash my hair and the braids and keep it going, okay? So as long as you need it, I will probably stretch this about three weeks before I like redo it. And then of course, y'all know what's coming up next, a series series of tutorials it's gonna be wigs as you guys know so get ready for that i'm just using a nude wig cap this is not necessarily <laughs> critical but this is what i like to do because y'all know i love braidless or glueless installs so let me know what you guys think about it down below i love you guys so much stay pretty and i will see you in my next video bye babies mm -hmm.